Hello my awesome subscribers, new video for you, um, I'm going to be demonstrating my video using a Neo, um, a PC engine, but it won't be this RX PC engine, it'll be another one, but it's be showcasing this, um, this item here, that we've got sat here. Now, I've been thinking about doing this for a really long time, I'll explain, um, the concept behind it. Have you ever tried to RGB mod a standard PC engine or say for example you want to you want to internal super gun your Neo Geo or something like you know a custom uh, a con consoleized MVS or something and for those type of things you need to make the connector um for example a white PC engine has an RF port on it and that is it so then you have to wire up the actual mod itself and then you have to put a connector onto it, an 8 pin DIN. And some people use an 8 pin mini DIN, some people use an 8 pin standard DIN. Same with the consoleized MVS, you have to use some sort of connector, so a lot of people use an 8 pin standard DIN. Now the thing with that is it's time consuming and it can take a bit of time. Um, and you want to quickly test that you're working before you start finalizing start you know i mean drilling holes and uh, for this din connector attaching it this and that you want to make sure that your mod actually works so that's where this comes in what this is as i'll show you it's a scott breakout now i'm gonna i'm gonna talk you through it quickly so you've got your scott connector your SCART connector comes out to your pots, so you've got red, green, blue, RGB, and you've got sync. Um, so you've got a pot on your, uh, on each of them. That pot will give you your resistance. So for a consoleized MVS or um, a super gun even, you can use this for a super gun as well. You set it to 330 or 390. Say, for example, you don't want to use the SNES connector because you don't have one, but you do have a SCART lead. SNES will require... Uh, 75 ohms so you can just turn that to 75 ohms and that's it same with the sink so you can set your sink um, you got three um, headers there those are for your jump those are jumper headers so you can either if you set it this way you've set it to um, go through the pot if you set it that way you've got it going directly to the pin so it goes straight out to the pin so no pots are being used bypass the pots you got 180 ohm resistor and you've got a jumper there for 16 by 9 and 4 by 3 which goes to your um, your standard pin to do your RGB switching. You've also got a volume pot there, uh, sorry a headphone jack there, sorry. And that is if you don't want it coming out of your SCART you can have it out of your headphone jack. So there's quite a few cool options there that you can, you've got on this. now. Um, it is a little bit hard to explain to you with just a beer PCB, so let's grab the um, the PC engine that I've done the mod with. Here it is. So I'll quickly show you. Let me just turn it on this way. So you, you see, you've got your jumpers there. So if you have a look there, I've got DGP or DRP and DBP. So the B stands for blue, the G stands for green, as you know. D stands for direct, P stands for pot. So depending on what side you put it on, you got your pot or your direct. You got your, sp uh, your speaker in there. When you got your headphone jack or your SCART, so you got, and then you got your um, 16 by 9, 4 by 3 there, 180 ohm resistor. You got your 5 volts. Uh, you got your ground. Your 12 volts is actually for your 4x3, but um, that's good for when you're doing consoleized Neo Geos or Jammer or um, Jammer to SCART or whatever. Then you've got a 12 volt off your Jammer PSU, so you can use that there. But most consoles don't have 12, plus they don't need 4x3, 16x9 is fine for them. So that's why um, that's not connected. So you've got your sink as well. So this is how it works. I've got two, 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 two screw headers. Um, depending on what side, so you're on the D side there, so direct connection. So when you're on direct connection, you stay on the direct connection side of the pot. When you're on pot side, then you screw to the pot side of the screw header, and then you can just adjust your pots. So at the moment, I'm on direct because Neo Geo doesn't need, um, PC Engine doesn't need it. There's the PC Engine RGB mod. I'm doing it from the expansion connector. Let's quickly show you. It's just 
done from the expansion connector using DuPont headers. That is all I'm using is just a bunch of DuPont headers. Um, so what we will do is, so what you do is you plug it in, right? So now I would have to mod that uh, to use to use it and to get RGB going. So this, I can test it now. I've, I've done it with DuPont connectors, messed around with it. Now what I can do is I can actually physically test it, see if it actually works before I do permanent. So let's stick uh, the SCART lead in, SCART leads in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn to the TV and I'm going to switch it on. So some weird films on at the moment. And there we have it, RGB R-Type. Take a step back. Should get some audio as well in a minute. Um, no, we've not got some audio. What have I done? Oh, I think I muted it. Bear with me a second, I think I might have muted the TV. Yes. Sorry, my bad. I muted the TV. Yes, I am one of those paranoid ones that I have to have the volume on an uh, even or on a multiple of five. I don't know why I've always been like that. It's weird. But yeah, there we have it. So, RGB modded PC engine that... Um, we have done via one of my um, SCART breakout boards and um, it's pretty good. So basically you can use it for a console Neo Geo, you can use it for um, RGB modding consoles themselves, um, even use it for things like um, the SNES Junior or you can use it for the N64 if you're going to do the NTSC version of it. Um, you can even use it for jammer um, super gun use. You can have it as a super gun if you really wanted to inside a super gun, and use it for that. Um, there's all there's all sorts you can use it for, there's, and, it, and it's pretty dinky. It's a pretty small little piece. Um, it's not big at all. Um, as you can see, it's, it's the size of the scar. So you know, awesome. It, I mean, I've just got it stuck on top of the PC engine. That's how small it is. And believe me, PC engines are tiny little things. Cute. But yeah, there we have it. So that's it really. I'll just quickly give you another, another showcase of it. By the way, some of this jittering that's going on, actually my TV, this LCD just does not like old SCART signals um, and things like that. Um, but on a CRT or on my other LCD, it's perfect, spot on. But yeah, there we have it. Pretty good. Um, actually, while I'm at it, yeah, phone's ringing. Hopefully the wife will answer it. What I do want to show you quickly is... Oh, I'm going to wait for some audio to come. There we go. So we can hear the audio. Plug that headphone jack in, audio is gone. And it's coming out of here. I can hear it. Unfortunately, I don't know how to get you to hear from a headphone jack, but I've got audio coming out of the headphone jack. And there you go, back on there. So we'll end the uh, video there. So there we have it. Um, uh, SCART breakout header, just there, pretty cool, um, can be used for quite a few things, um, very good for testing as well, um, as well. I've got quite a few of these, so um, if anyone wants one, give me a shout, um, I can sort it out, uh, I can either do it soldered or unsoldered, just as it is, solder it up yourself, um, but yeah, there we have it, just there, um, pretty cool. Quite nice. Thanks for watching guys and hopefully I should bring you some more cool videos very soon.